What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country, in Washington, D.C., and everything you need to know about on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, stimulus check update, and daily news. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below right now so you don't miss out on new videos. It's completely free to do so. And remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we got a lot to talk about here. And also, thanks for hitting the like button for us down below. Uh, President Biden is going to be having an important speech today. We're going to be talking about what is going to be coming from his speech today, including the stimulus package uh, announcements today from his speech. Also, what's going to be coming about uh, from Russia today, uh, what is already happening with Russia here today, We uh, Russia and America. We got a lot to talk about here, so let's just jump right in. Yeah, Russia actually has a 40-mile-long convoy entering the Ukraine's capital city of Kiev, and Russia is continuing to send more and more troops, tanks, weaponry. Here you can see some pictures of the 40-mile-long convoy, um, Russian convoy entering the capital city of Kiev going into Ukraine, and... Um, yeah, it's massive. It's massive. And um, uh, the the delegation talks, the um, peace talks that we had hoped going into um, from Russia and Ukraine uh, did not come out with a successful talk here. And they were not able to make an agreement. And it's just like I figured, I, I didn't think that Putin was going to just... Uh, just stop because he would see it as failure and everybody would see him as a failure. So I personally don't think that that is a likely option unless these sanctions uh, really get to Putin and Russia. Remember that Russians, Russia's dollar called the ruble has now dropped to less than a penny uh, of worth compared to the U.S. dollar. So the U.S. dollar uh, and the Russia ruble is now worth a penny, less than a penny compared to the U.S. dollar. It has fallen dramatically. The the uh, Russia, the Moscow stock market fallen dramatically. Shell has now exited and uh, withdrawn out of doing business with Russia, joining BP as well. And um, companies like Total Energies and Exxon will now face questions as well. If Exxon pulls out of there, that could be, that will be billions of dollars more. Remember that BP... Uh, had a $14 billion stake in Russia alone. And I wouldn't be surprised, surprised to see Exxon do it as well. Shell, again, more billions of dollars. And this is just the start of this. This is just the start. We're just, Russia's just losing billions and billions of dollars per day um, from multiple different avenues, left and right, left and right. And don't even count the or count the money that has been frozen um, from banks across the world um, in, in Russian assets that has just been, been frozen, basically seized. Russia had to double their interest rates in their country from 9.5%, which was already way higher than it here is in the U.S. Uh, remember, home mortgage rates are around 3 4%, depending on what type of interest rate uh, or what type of home mortgage you go for. They were at 9.5%. Uh, they doubled it to 20%, 20%. Imagine getting you're paying 20% interest on your home loan. Um, yeah, we'd be going back, you know, 50 years ago, right, when, you know, it was out of control, right? Uh, it's still not helping their economy right now. And I even got a, a funny story for you guys uh, at the end of this episode, and you can't make this stuff up. Uh, we'll get to that here, though, in a few minutes. Also, even China yesterday says that China and Russia are not allies. So even China had to make a distinction that um, them and Russia are not allies. Uh, this is a stark difference than what they were saying just a week or so ago uh, as Russia is uh, losing allies quickly yeah 
At a daily press conference, China's foreign ministry tied, tried suddenly to put some distance between Beijing's relationship with Moscow and uh, Ukraine. Quote, China and Russia are comprehensive strategic partners of coordination. China-Russia relations are based on non-alliance, non-confrontation, and non-targeting of third countries. China's position on Ukraine crisis is based on the merits of the matter itself, he said without elaborating. We always stand on the side of peace and justice. He then reiterated a description of the situation as complex, refusing to back a Kiev outright, though. Meanwhile, China is apparently willing to work with the U.S., which is uh, kind of actually shocking here, on the Build Back Better World initiative. I know kind of strange here that they're actually siding here a little bit with the U.S. Uh, instead of Russia. I know a little bit change of tone here uh, as the, the war in Ukraine has not quite gone the way Russia planned. They thought that it would kind of be over by now. And um, yeah, you see the stark change in headlines here, even from China. China willing to work with the U.S. on Build Back Better World Initiative. Yeah, China is willing to work with the U.S. on a G7-led global infrastructure plan and welcomes Washington to join its Belt and Road Initiative. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said on Monday, the group of seven richest democracies, the G7, consists of the United States and allies, proposed the Build Back Better World initiative in June to help developing countries meet infrastructure needs as they sought to counter China's growing influence. But China wants to help. Quote, we are also willing to consider coordinating with the U.S. Build Back Better World initiative to provide the world with more high-quality public goods, China said in a video message at an event for the 50th anniversary of the Shanghai Communique, which marked the normalizing of relations between the U.S. and China. He also said China is open to the United States participating in the Belt and Road Initiative and Global Development Initiatives, a call by the Chinese president, said, for all countries to work towards a sustainable development. They also reiterated a call for the United States to stop supporting independence for Taiwan, a self-ruled island China claims as its own. But remember, the U.S. is bound by a treaty to support Taiwan, so they can't exactly do that. Uh, a little bit of complicated issue there. And Biden's going to be announcing uh, his in probably in his State of the Union address today multiple different stimulus provisions, including Biden to announce plan to lower costs for American families during the State of the Union address. Uh, you can see here Biden will finally probably ditch the Build Back Better plan to unveil the new Made in America economic plan during his State of the Union address as the White House declines to say whether he will wear a face mask. I mean, honestly, if he's standing up there at the podium by himself, really don't need to wear a face mask. But that, that's kind of irrelevant. Um, but um, Build Back Better, as we've kind of been reporting on this channel, uh, at least the name is going to be probably ditched or, or gone, uh, and they're going to be renaming it here. And they're going to probably go with a new version of the stimulus package, a new name of the stimulus package, and probably multiple new things in this stimulus package. You can see here, Biden will shift from his Build Back Better plan to a new four-point economic agenda during his State of the Union address today, coming today, focusing on making more things in America. Always a great thing. Of course, China wants to help. I think they can feel things slipping away little by little, right? We do need to make more things in America um, a little bit at a time. The more, the better especially with the price of gas coming up and having to ship things across the world. 
the more things we can make here and the better. We got to start doing that more and more at a time. Uh, make more things in America, reduce costs of everyday expenses, promoting fair competition, and eliminating barriers to good paying jobs. The American people will hear a lot about how he's going to lower their costs, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said. He will also discuss inflation and the situation in Ukraine, Supreme Court justices, cabinet members, lawmakers, and uh, a lot of different things in this new stimulus package to be revealed today. Now, in this speech, the question is, is what direction are they going to go here um, with this new Build Back Better bill or this new Made in America bill? This new four-point economic rescue plan. And the question is, are they going to try to pass something with Republicans? Remember that we just seen, uh, kind of coincidentally, Mitt Romney, Republican senator from Utah, actually introduce a bill yesterday, I believe it was, uh, for the child tax credits, which would actually be a larger amount for, and remember, that's one piece of the Build Back Better package. Um, to provide the monthly checks to children. That's just one piece of the Build Back Better package. And it was actually be more money for children under the age of six, $350 per month instead of $300 per month for a total of $4,200 per year. Again, this is coming from a Republican, Mitt, uh, Mitt Romney, Senator Mitt Romney. Uh, does have some different changes in there, um, one of them being work requirements. And um, again, more money, in this package, um, and there's Republican support from it with the with the changes in there, like the work requirements and actually more money, at least for children under the age of six. And um, will some Republicans sign on for this? Will they do this through standalone bills? Now, of course, again, I'm not from either side, Republican or Democrat, so I'm not like defending Mitt Romney as a Republican here or anything like that. I can just kind of throw that in there because every time I if I defend somebody or anything, everybody, I just want to put that out there. It's not my agenda. Um, but I seen some comments here in the last video when we talked about the $4,200 child tax credits because they're $4,200 for children under the age of six instead of $3,600 if they uh, end up passing this, which honestly is probably a really good um, likelihood that this could pass, okay, because it's Republican and Democrat support, okay, um, coming from a Republican you know, Mitt Romney, he's not up for re-election for two and a half more years until 2024. So, you know, I've seen some comments saying, oh, he's just doing this to get to get the vote for the midterms. He's not even up for re-election this year. Uh, remember that senators are up for re-election every six years, okay? Only about one third of uh, senators go up for re-election every two years, okay? So keep that in mind. Mitt Romney's not even up for re-election this year. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. Uh, he's, he legit seems to be one of the senators. And again, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. So I'm just kind of giving you my legitimate opinion here. He, he and he had, um, this is, he's, he's kind of wanted to pass the child tax credits for a while now, but he's just officially introduced this bill. If you've been uh, watching here, um, he legit seems like one of those guys that, again, just wants to, take people, take children out of poverty, right? Um, so, I mean, he's not doing this for the vote. His He doesn't come up for re-election until two and a half years from now. So I don't really think that he's doing this for the vote because he's he's not up for voting. He's not up for a vote this year. So, and he's kind of sticking his neck out there um, when it's really the Democrats that are really trying to pass the child tax credits. He's kind of going against the grain here um, as the only Republican to kind of come out and offer this bill. Now, Republican Senator Josh Hawley uh, has a bill for this as well, but he's been very, very quiet on this recently. That that bill that he, uh, I don't know if he formally introduced it or talked about it. It, it was last year, um, the last we heard about that when former President Donald Trump was still president. Well, no, actually, no, that was, I don't, I don't remember the last time he talked about it, but it's been a while. It's been a while since Josh Hawley talked about that. So it's been quite a while, 
But Mitt Romney's kind of going against the grain. He's going against most Republicans here um, to do this, but he put the work requirement in there so he could get some Republican support. Remember, to pass a standalone bill in the Senate, you would uh, need 60 votes. So you would need the most logical way would be like 50 Democrats, all Democrats, and 10 Republicans. You'd probably get Joe Manchin's vote uh, with a work requirement and 10 Republicans. So that's kind of why we're Mitt Romney. If you just kind of look at things logically, you could probably probably get that. You could probably get that. Remember that Republicans are not against stimulus. They're not against the child tax credits. And, and history kind of shows this. You just kind of have to look at things as, as a realist, okay? Um, and just look at history here. When you look back here, it was actually the Republicans and the former President Donald Trump that raised the child tax credits from $1,000 per child to $2,000 per child underneath the 2017 Trump tax cuts. Um, and they did that through the reconciliation process, actually. All Republicans, when Republicans controlled the House, the Senate, and the presidency, uh, they did that with the reconciliation process. And then, ironically, the Democrats swooped in and passed the child tax credits last year with the reconciliation process. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Um, and then increased it from 3000 to 3600 I don't know, it's like they're trying to one-up each other. So, and then remember that stimulus package one and stimulus package two was with stimulus checks for, you know, mostly everybody. I mean, not everybody gets stimulus checks, high income earners, and, you know, some people are left out and stuff. Um, but those were passed with Republicans and Democrats combined. So remember that all this stuff is possible with bipartisan support. Also, in today's episode of You Can't Make This Stuff Up, yeah, we talk about all these different kind of sanctions going on in Russia. It's actually kind of affecting us here at home. We talk about all these companies um, pulling out of Russia and not wanting to do business with Russia. Well, uh, here's one that, uh, like I said, you can't make this stuff up. Several states here in the U.S. are restricting Russian vodka sales in solidarity with Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, so if you love your Russian vodka, you might be out of luck in some states, including apparently in my home state of Ohio. <laughs> I know you can't make this stuff up. Uh, Republican Governor Mike DeWine of Ohio orders halt to Russian-made vodka sales. In a tweet, Governor Mike DeWine says retailers have been asked to immediately pull Russian-made vodka from their shelves. Not Russian-made anything else, just the vodka. Yeah, so if you love your vodka, uh, and if you're in one of these states that are pulling the Russian vodka, yeah, you might want to have a talk with <laughs> uh, your governor because uh, I know this is just uh, just a fun, funny story. Uh, just uh, kind of joking with you guys, but this is true. This is true. Uh, so yeah, so you might not get the Russian-made vodka for a while. You may have to choose uh, some other type of vodka for the time being. Not that I really had vodka in a while, but I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy that uh, a bunch of states are restricting Russian vodka sales but but not other stuff it's, it's just kind of weird right so uh yeah if you got your russian vodka it might be in limited supply here for this the short term uh, i know you can't make this stuff up but uh but yeah honestly russia's uh, they're losing business left and right from all over the world and uh they literally might be segregated off on their own. This story is just so funny to me. I know the whole situation is not funny, but the the whole we're we're gonna segregate just the vodka, nothing else, just the vodka. It's kind of weird. I, I, let me know your thoughts here in the comments. But honestly, good for Ukraine and good for the rest of the world for um, backing them. Um, and honestly, I don't know. It, it almost seems like Ukraine could win here. It, it almost seems like they could. They're they're holding strong. The problem here, I think, is, is that I don't think Putin's going to stop at anything. 
So the question here is how long is this going to go? So let me know your thoughts here. Uh, I'll be here later with you here today to see what uh, President Biden is going to say here and uh, what's going to happen here. So remember to subscribe down below if you haven't yet to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. It makes it so you won't miss out on new videos. After clicking the subscribe button, click the bell icon to get reminders when we go live. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, do so so you can help us reach 400,000 subscribers. It's just kind of a goal of mine. We're trying to get there. And uh, remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see how there's a Social Security potential raise coming uh, that could be really big this year. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.